Hey everybody, Jamie here, Enigmatic Nomadics YouTube channel down on the on the beach in uh, in the bay in Mexico, and some new campers came in the last couple of days. Now I'm going to ask you to bear with me on the wind on the mic. I couldn't find my uh, my wind sock that diffuses the wind, and rather than miss an opportunity to get a great interview and show you guys an awesome platform, we're just going to have to forego the part that when we hear a little bit of the wind buffeting against the mic. So help me out on that, but. Uh, I was lucky enough to run into Curtis and Arlene last night, super cool people, and what I really like about their rig is that Curtis has set up what, what would have been in uh, one of the prototypes I would have gone with, the ideal setup. I, I had a thing for these Fuzos uh, for a, maybe a year or two where I was just checking them out on Auto Trader, trying to find a good used one, looking for ones that were already four-wheel drive, be it a a snowplow truck in the Sierra Nevadas or a uh, military truck on govdeals.com, just a couple of places you could find them. And uh, Curtis, he took it a little further than me. Closest thing to, to buy uh, already made from the factory is a Earth Cruiser. And uh, I believe they're going for somewhere north of a couple hundred grand. Curtis was uh, shrewd enough to do a lot better than that. I, I, I've said enough, let me go ahead and just throw it over to Curtis and let him uh, tell, tell the story of his rig. What's up, man? So this is my 0506 Fuso right here. It's the uh, FG140. That means it's the diesel four-wheel drive turbocharged intercooled uh, four-cylinder five-speed four-wheel drive Fuso truck. And that's basically what we started with. You can see it's got a, a really handy differential. On the front. We were we were lucky enough to to have to get all this done here. This is a 12,000 pound winch in the front, all plate steel with, these are gonna be motorcycle racks eventually. And um, we made it extra tough for, uh, for anything coming through the windshield. We just felt like we were, our legs were so close to the front of this rig that we really needed protection before it gets to us, which is. It makes sense. And you know, these things, you see them uh, coming from the factory with tubing like this. This looks just like that. How were you able to get something that looks so finished done? Where would you go if somebody wanted to do that? We've, I, I have a personal friend that I always go to with all my stuff. He's built all my off-road trucks, uh, built my Bronco, and the best part of him is I can get in there and do it with him, which really makes me happy in the end. Um, I came up with a basic design. I just tell him where I was going, what I was wanting. Wind deflector, plenty of lights, and some storage up front. And uh, we've got 12 inch LEDs on the side as work lights. And uh, we're, not, we're not done with this whole thing yet. Well, matter of fact, I've only had this powder coated. I still gotta pull this and, but it's super easy. This is basically just a brush guard to keep the brush off of this, off of this rig and to look really cool. And, I hear you. And keep stuff out of the front windshield. But, um, yeah, this, this truck has been flawless. We're at uh, 82,000 miles now. I think I got it with 71. And uh, we eventually want to do air ride seats, like three buckets across the front for air ride seats and stuff like that, just for a little more comfort. Um, right now we're in configuration for like North America. When we go south for good, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop the trailer, the Samurai, put the two motorcycles on front and put like 37s under it for for just ease and convenience and getting out on the beaches where we're not gonna have the samurai to pull us out because the samurai has pulled us out four or five times now. <laughs> when Curtis says 37s, he's talking about the size of the tire and usually if you see a big truck with big tires, they're gonna be like 33s or something. So 37s are pretty big. Are you gonna stay with dualies on the back? No, I'm gonna go super singles front and rear. And okay. The, the trick about that is it eliminates the dualies your track, your tire tracks are in this in a common rut, and uh, you can take the back one off, turn it around, put it on the front, so that I only need two spares to really be bulletproof out there, you know. And the 37s, uh, believe it or not, are not much bigger than these factory tires. The factory tires on this rig were a little taller. I didn't put these on, but I want to run them out, and I'll go back to that factory size. So the 37s. They're really only a couple inches taller, and it'll give me a longer final gear. I can do 72 right now, the way we're set up. Uh huh. And that's plenty fast enough for this circus going down the road, but um, 
I think I can drop the RPMs and get a little better mileage if, if I go ahead and do some of that to it. Is this rig four-wheel drive? Absolutely four-wheel drive. Did you put four-wheel drive on it? No. How did the you find it? The FG140 comes with the different uh, four-wheel drive differential up front. I lived in Incline, uh, Incline Village, Nevada. And uh, one day I come walking out of my house, this thing was parked up the road. So I immediately went and made friends with that guy. And uh, it took me about a year and a half to buy it from him. But I, I got him. I was looking at about 42000 for a brand new one. And I was just making the call to make it happen when I, I went by one more time and the guy broke. And, and we were able to work out a deal for right around twenty grand. So about half of what I would have spent on a new one. And right. It had 71,000 miles on it. So uh, just a straight flatbed? Yeah, it was perfect for what we were going to do. And uh, we had this thing laying around. So we cut the front off. And we put a winch under the front of this bed right here. It's a dump bed. So this was a dump truck? Yep, it's a dump bed. It still is. And uh, I put rollers front and I pinned it here. There's four places all the way around that look just like this. And then I put rollers underneath the on the frame rail back here and this this whole rig winches on and off i've seen a lot of rigs with with uh casitas or bigfoots the fiberglass uh more type of an egg shell looking and they're smaller one of the things i really like about this rig is you didn't let the size of the bed dictate the size of the rig that you put on the back talk a little bit about that couldn't do it the bed was so stinking short that i had to overhang a little bit and it actually worked out perfect we also put this big box under here. This big box takes uh, all of our emergency road stuff. So my all my jacks, spares, compressors in there, and uh, straps. Our, uh, all of our recovery stuff that we would ever need is, is all locked in that box right there. Which is, did you make that box? How did you get a box that fit so perfect? Bought that box. I actually bought it used. <laughs> and then I had it, uh, it powder coated so that it would be tough to for the road and surfaces and stuff. Cause you know, we lived, I lived at a minimum of 6,200 feet. So it was always snowing and stuff up there. So I really needed tough stuff, but um, yeah, that box has been perfect. So back here, this used to be our black water tank right here. I removed that completely. So I'm gonna try to do some sort of a little box that swings down here for hoses and stuff. This is our gray water. I just put a hose to this and water whatever needs water in around me right now. Okay. This is the umbilical cord to the home. This connects the home to the truck and this connects the trailer to the truck. So they're basically doing the same thing. It runs all my exterior lights up here, charges my home and we're going down the road, keeps all the refrigeration going and everything. And uh, that has been really handy. So. This section of the home that's unsupported, I wasn't really too worried about because it would be unsupported anyway because it's a travel trailer. So it doesn't really matter. It was designed to have that so overhang. I, yeah, I hear you. I pinned it here like I did in all four places there. I gave it a little room to flex and uh, it's worked out brilliantly. I can't hang anything back here like I want to mm -hmm. because it is just a Tahoe light. We've had to do quite a bit of beef up inside and uh, because we enjoy the snow too, mm -hmm. uh, we completely redid everything inside. We recovered all the cabinets, built new cabinets, put drawers in, put a, a three foot high bed in there, queen size. You'll see that in a second. It worked out really nice. But moving back, we're in the fun zone now. These are Suron electric motorcycles. Okay. There's no bicycle about them other than there's mountain bike components on everything. Um, this bike right here was our first one we got for about 3200 bucks pre-ordered. Since then I've put the uh, Suron X controller on it and uh, larger sprockets in the rear. So so I'm a, it's a little torquier than, than stock. They've got great lights on them. This bike right here with me on it will do about 50 miles an hour. What's your range on these? Um, I ride I ride really hard and I can get 26 miles a single track out of this Okay. in the Sierras. Here, um, the sandy surfaces really take the horse pressure out of it, so it takes you know it takes my mileage down a little bit. But I find that um, 
19, 20 miles around here and you are dead and pretty much bleeding all over the place <laughs> by the time you get back home. Right, you have so, no pedals. No pedals. They're not bicycles. These are not bicycles, these are motorcycles. With uh, mountain bike components, the whole thing weighs 110 pounds. Okay. So it, it really stops well. This bike we modified with a little better brake just because it does a little crazier stuff. And uh, other than that, these things rip. I have enjoyed the, the hell out of these things everywhere we've gone. Um, How long does it take to charge the uh, batteries once you dead battery? Um, it's a Panasonic um, ion battery. Lithium ion? Lightweight? Light, well, they're, yeah, compared to whatever else is out there, but. Right. Um, it's it's the major weight of the bike and they sit they sit in a locking compartment right here Okay, they run down to about there, but um uh, About three and a half hours of charge, which is which is good for a, an ion battery You know it, it takes it gives it a little charge and takes a long time to do it So it's really working out well for us But these things are key to our enjoyment. We ride them everywhere. We ride them in major towns all over where we go We ride them uh, um, on uh, mountain bike trails everywhere. We make our own trails. We take them to the bike uh, off-road parks. Those are pretty cool. Um, the, uh, the thing is about these is they're really not discovered yet, so there's really no laws yet too much about them. So we're getting away with a lot of stuff right now by being stealthy. We're right. Quiet. We don't tear anything up. We come, we go, we take great video of everything we do and uh, mostly just having a great time. And this, these allow us to get out and see stuff we just wouldn't do. We just wouldn't do it. Even with my big motorcycles, which I planned on bringing originally, I couldn't go the places that go with these. It really lets me into some places that are crazy. And this here, this is a 86, 87 Samurai. It's been all done up. 8,000 pound winch on the front of it. It's got all all the lift and bells and whistles. It's got the, uh, it came with a 1.3 uh, carbureted motor and it's got, now it's got the 1.6 fuel injected 16 valve. So it, it's a just a ripper. It's got 433 gears in it, lockers front and rear. There's really nowhere we can't go. We, we, we haven't found anything we couldn't do yet. Um, Part of this summer is going to be uh, the real high rocky peaks in Colorado, and we'll know more after that. Okay, yeah, I think uh, I've got a buddy that's got a Sammy, and there's just about it, nothing it can't do if yeah. my dirt bike can get there. It can do it. <laughs> yeah. A lot of faith in those rigs. Yeah, me too. I'm getting more. It's a handful to drive, man. It's short, and it's way too fast for itself, but um, it really does okay. And it's got some really neat stuff on it. It's all... Uh, Trail Tough Suzuki stuff from Oregon. That's an actual uh, place that builds all this stuff. They okay. Build, Trail build, Tough, that's the brand. Yeah. Trail Tough Suzuki stuff. It's a little tore up on this one, but that's that's them. And they do an excellent job. They do the high steer. They do these with the big springs. They, and they did all this stuff before I owned it. The uh -huh. guy had $11,000 in receipts. For this rig, and I, I bought it for six grand, which choked me <laughs> to spend six grand on on a toy. But this thing has really saved us. Like I said, it's pulled the whole thing out like four or five times. Wow! With the twelve thousand pound winch on the front of that, and this is a great sand anchor right here. What do you reckon your rig weighs with the uh, camper on the back total? Do you have an idea? Um, I would say that this rig is probably seven thousand pounds. Okay. Just, uh, probably just the rig. Okay. And I'm probably really close to 10 rolling with with everything. But this thing has an exhaust brake. Uh, it's got real good compression for, you know, the downhills and stuff. It slows, I barely touch the brakes. And then I've got two axles of brakes on, uh, on the trailer. Okay. Instead of one. So we also took and did a spring over on the trailer so that this was nice and high and we could get into places really easy. It's a dove to help trailer, so I was probably only this high off the ground so that you could put cars on here and stuff. So we did a spring over axle and uh, shoot, it only took us four hours, I think, in a shop. Any special parts? No special parts. We actually just flipped them things over. I cut the, I cut the electrical lines for the brakes and then stubbed them back together and everything is working perfect. We haven't 
drug this really since we, we did it. And nice. The Samurai can drive on and off without the, well, it can drive off without the ramps, but I use the ramps to put it back on, so that's, you know, one less step. But uh, this little Samurai came with just the coolest components ever. These right here are called Hidden Links, and it's all built into this bumper back here. And that allows this thing to, to stretch, just stretches way out. These are Toyota rear springs uh, with a relocation kit for the first for front pin. And then uh, these, the, the springs were so short on these things, they just couldn't flex through the big stuff. They just couldn't keep their tires on the ground. So they really addressed it with, with this whole kit. And that's the same, the same people, Trail Tough, Suzuki stuff. They also built all these this back stuff tire rack swings out, the fuel can swings out, the top flips up. It's got a great spare mount in back. Oh, we're getting to the ugly side. <laughs> I don't see an ugly side on this thing. Oh, it's so dirty. But this has really allowed us to, um, to see the parts of this uh, of Baja that we would have never seen before. Between the bikes and the Samurai, We've been out to places that just no, there's very few people. Very. Few. I can imagine. You can get. Uh, do you do you air down the t rear tires at all to get through big thick sand? On this. On the uh, Fuso. Never the Fuso. Um, this I, I bring down to eight and five when we're in the dunes. Oh wow. Real low. So that really must stretch out the footprint. It weighs nothing, and then you spread those little tires out, and this thing it just gets across it. <laughs> We were going everywhere that the little uh, the UTVs were going, and there were thousands of them out there. President's Day, we were in uh, we were in Imperial Dunes, and uh, okay, we could follow those guys as long as we wanted to out there in the dunes, and it was just up and down and around and just all over the place. <clears throat> so we're really happy with that little guy right there. But when we do go south completely, we won't have a trailer and a truck. We'll just have the main home, the two motorcycles on the front, and it'll be it'll be a lot beefier for for uh, South America. Central and South America are going to be challenging, so we want also with the poverty levels down there, you don't want stuff just sitting out. So this would either have to be an enclosed trailer, or um, or just leave it, and we're going to just going to leave it. So you got to go less stuff, well documented, you know. Five or six copies of every registration you have with you because they're going to want copies of everything and if you can just hand it to them you, you don't have to go to his brother's mother's cousin to get a photocopy that takes you know a couple days it's good advice uh, it's it's tough it's tough we've traveled extensively down through uh, panama and costa rica already and uh those, those are one of the really cool things that we've learned that and just be friendly and direct with them you know always smiling because we are happy. We're happy to be there in their country, you know? Right. So, as we move forward, this is our cassette head. We had a, uh, I told you I took the black water tank out of this completely. So what we have now is this door that opens up right here, and then this cassette pulls out, and you just take this whole thing and dump it, dump it through here. There, we had a bunch of different choices. We felt like this was the one for us. Just because I can, I can, I can dig a hole and bury this anywhere, and really right. not bug anybody for too long. You know, it's it's a good thing to do. And we had a, a uh, we put a 10 gallon hot water heater in here, so we can take good long showers. Nice. Yeah, and of course we got an ex an exterior uh, outside shower to boot. It's just really handy. I love showering outside. I I offend some neighbors sometimes, but. This is our new Baja sticker. We're quite proud of that. Right <laughs> like I said before, for now, we're going to keep these dualies on here in yeah. North America because we're going to do uh, Alaska, Canada, Nova Scotia, and all the states in between. Like right now, we, ha we hate to be running out of Baja, but we have three, four more days here because we want to get to Texas before it gets too hot. Okay. And um, we got some family reasons to go down there and and see Texas so that's what we're gonna do now for the next couple weeks I can dig it moving forward this is a 33 gallon diesel tank right here it's gonna be replaced with at least a hundred 
um, aluminum sort of rectangle long so I can get it up to about here for, for height and uh, 100 gallons will get me um, shit uh, it should give me 800 900 with reserve miles gotcha so we really want to do that and eventually down in South America we want to go diesel burner stove diesel burner generator diesel burner everything uh, this is my honey Arlene Arlene she's she completes me and she's going to tell you all about everything we did inside what? it was about a ten thousand uh, dollar renovation inside so how you doing Arlene are you having fun in this rig so far since you guys started out in it oh yeah absolutely this is <clears throat> this is our home so <laughs> And we built it that way. Well, tell us about it. There's a window actually behind this wall right here. And I just took um, the insulation foam board stuff and I glued a tapestry to it to decorate that. And then did all of these doors to match it. And well, you can't tell, but it, it runs all the way up the back as well. Did 17 cabinet doors in this place. All of these, some of these were from scratch. Some of them were just redone. Did all this. Painted all these walls. They were, I don't know, a weird blue, white. It was just horrible. You know, <laughs> <coughs> we built this cat. Well, my honey built this cabinet. I built the doors for it, but built this cabinet. It was much smaller than this. And so we ripped it out and built that one. Okay. Brand new stove. We're much better with this stuff. Refrigerator. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Yeah. Is this an RV stove? It is. And and all we had before was the stove top. So we we got the oven going so we can have cookies and and all kinds of good stuff my honey makes me. All the propane? All propane, all brand new with a three-way uh three-way refrigerator. Okay. It's powered on on 12 volt. It's powered on gas and uh and AC power as well. So we got a lot of options to go with. And it, it was big and really modern. And so having ice cubes and stuff was really important to us. Amen to that. And then I don't know if you can if you can see this wood here, these corners. Mm -hmm. This is all tiger stripe bamboo. And we got it in one big sheet and then we just started we just started building. We decided what we wanted. And the bathroom also got the tiger stripe with the with the inset I, I think they call these bottom mounts or something uh -huh. but uh, it all worked out really well the shower is big and huge and we put this giant window in here so that we could have a nice comfortable shower and storage Looks and, good, looks good. And then my honey's got this huge closet over here that uh, that we, and she took and she resurfaced all this stuff. It was horrible. She she took the time to match all the lines. Oh yeah. In the cabinets and everything. And it, it, it just came out perfect. And then she went ahead and lined this as well with it for our storage down here. And we put this beautiful cassette head in here from uh, Thefford. It's really handy. That's what I showed you outside. It pulls mm -hmm. out and no waste is ever in here. It just drops completely out of there. I really like it that you can take the cassette out from the back on mine. I have to take the toilet, carry it outside, separate it outside. And this is just taking it to the next level. It was really important. And with the, with the little bit of room we have in here, this thing, this, the head moves around. Nice. So, you know, you can point your legs over here or over there and just makes more room. It was just very smart for us. And then this is uh, flooring. We insulated the floor. We had to actually cut this completely out, redo the floor in here, and then cover it with uh, flooring throughout. We pulled all this out. We had all these redone with special little pillows made. And uh, this is, of course, big storage underneath here. This is uh, mainly camera equipment, exercise stuff, yoga mats. Gotcha, gotcha. All that good stuff. This again was just a big old sheet and we decided what we wanted and we kept this the same so that it would be a bed. We may change it later, we don't know. Because it's such handy storage that we've done here, 
it's really hard to get rid of that storage. Like to put two lazy boys or something in here right. would, be, would be super cool, but then we, we had to have the TV. So. <laughs> How are you pulling a signal in for the TV? Um, well, we don't. Unless we're uh, I hotspot to Netflix or something, okay, and get uh, Prime Netflix. We got Hulu, so when we have phone service, we're we're pretty strong. Both gotcha. both phones go to uh, hotspot, and and other than that, we kind of like not having it. You know, I try to check for all the digital channels everywhere we go, but it drives my honey crazy. <laughs> right. I'm not a TV watcher. She's right. TV a whole lot. Behind, we have this covered up right now because the sun's so hot here, we'd die very quick death. It's a whole window. It's a big window. But that's all okay. window. And um, behind, behind this, behind this drawer here, is a boot barn. We cut a hole in the back of it, and all of our shoes go down in there so that they're not on the floor. Just another way to keep things, you know, organized. Down here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so there's, I mean, there's probably six pairs of shoes in there, easy. <laughs> gotcha. And mine, he built this hamper, which normally has a backpack hanging on it, and you pull it up out of there, and you can go to the laundromat. Okay. He built all of these drawers. There's four of them. They're very, very deep. Yeah, he built all of that, too, which just makes all the difference for storage. I mean, you just got to be able to put everything away. So you're using under-the-bed storage? Maximizing your space. I love how clean this is. You know, I, I think I have mine cleaned up and then I come over and take a look at yours and I realize how clutter, how much clutter I still have not found a way to, to like hide behind stuff, stuff that makes it look so much nicer, like a cabinet. Yeah. Well, and up in these cabinets here, I mean, even stuff like that's created more storage. Like we have baskets stored to the, hooked to the side of the walls. We got another one hooked there. We got one hooked here. It holds all the bottles and stuff in place, you know, so you're not chasing stuff when you travel. We got all the little stuff that flattens up, you know, the right. measuring cups. That's awesome. Yeah, I do not have flat measuring and it cups. Just like this here, he made this here, so it's like super convenient to grab like the morning stuff, you know, and it closes back up. It's just, it's really all about everything having its own place and it closes back up. There it goes. It closes back up. <laughs> so, and like that has all dividers in it. There's dividers and all this stuff up here that holds just everything in its place. So you can find it, you can go back to it. And it makes all the difference if the space is clean, you know, and clear. You don't feel like you're getting crowded in. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Everything has its place. Would you mind if do you mind sitting down together where I can get you both in the shot? Sure. Yeah. And uh, it's a wonderful rig that you have here. It's a great tour. Uh, you mind if we just take a few moments and talk a little bit about what your uh, inspiration was to maybe strike out and, and do what you're doing traveling? Is this something that you plan to do full time or for a few years at a stretch? Uh, talk a little bit about yourselves and, and why is it that we're here on the beach and you're doing what you're doing, if you don't mind. <laughs> I've, I've had this dream. It was probably something my dad instilled in me many, many years ago. And um, I bought the rig and started working on it, but it wasn't really anything that you could, uh, you know, comfortably live in until, until I met my honey. And he fought me tooth and nail to redo the interior. <laughs> and then when we redo it at the end, he's like, you know, my dad would really liked this. <laughs> what? Your dad was riding your boat about redoing the inside too, huh? Yeah, his dad thought it was a great rig, but just the inside needed some attention. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't like all that. He just thought it was all these motorhomes were just too cheap and just too too light. So we did uh, we did I think what what he would have done eventually. You Which know. makes us really happy. Yeah. So he would have liked to travel. <clears throat> oh, he, he was did. he yeah. was the traveler. <laughs> he gave me that traveling bug, and um, you know I didn't I didn't want to go and see the world through just my eyes. So I wanted a partner that would be with me and love me and, and be there to pick me up when I fall over. And I found her in Marlene. And uh, once we were together, um, everything just started falling in place. I had a couple of years till I retired and um, we were able to, to connect and, and work a bunch of stuff out. And uh, she, was, she was right on board with coming out here and roughing it. And, and it can be rough. 
our adjustments as a female to be made out here. Right. Huge adjustments. Well, and there's just adjustments as a couple too when you ride on top of each other all the time and you don't have the stuff that like used to fluff your ego or whatever, just make you comfortable, make you feel like you're doing stuff right. So you just you just learn a whole lot of stuff about yourself and about each other when you're out here. And Yes, you do. And this wasn't, you know, I always wanted to travel the world for real, but it wasn't like my, I didn't know how it was going to happen or anything like that. And then when I met him and he was like, this was his dream, you know, I had to do a lot of spiritual work and a lot of other stuff, you know, because you, you have to figure out what makes you happy and what your center is and what your balance is so that you can, you know, live a life where you're always moving and you know they're just different things that you have to learn to become grounded and so i i'm super excited that this is what we're doing and i love that i'm happy to see a new place every couple of days and <laughs> the the only thing that drives me crazy is we have way more content than i have time to upload sometimes oh so you've been filming it oh absolutely i filmed a lot of it <laughs> so yeah. many hours of footage <laughs> Yeah, beautiful stuff. What is it about this way of traveling, when you consider how much effort and how much cost you've put in to making this rig what it is, gosh, you could just have a, a house or rent an apartment someplace, maybe even stay in an in-law apartment of one of your <laughs> friends or families, and you could use that, that same amount of energy to just fly places and just be right there on the beach in a hotel and be pampered and stuff, but you just chose to go this route. Well, talk to me about the thought process. Well, I don't know. For one, we're not tour people. Like we don't, we really don't like anybody else like telling us when and where and how. You know, like if we want to change our mind in the middle, we can because it's just us. You know, um, and I think anything that you do in life has like adjustments and struggles, and it's like so. Where do you want to put your energy? And we just want to. We're not doing this to save money. We're doing this to see the world. You know, find see out where our forever place is going to be, and yeah, I don't know, see what we're made of. I guess you should. We built this rig so that we could go places that a whole lot of people weren't. And um, it's so far, it's really fulfilled our dream of just going places where a whole lot of people aren't going to be. And at the same time, getting through places that there is a whole lot of people, you know. And you have your dogs with you. And we yeah. have our dogs. You know, you could be on a plane and you could look out there and be like, oh, it'd be cool to see that. But now that you're in some other direction with some other people, you know, it just doesn't work out that way. Now we can be like, yeah see where that road goes you know so i and don't know another big part of this whole thing is the people we meet um the stories we hear the that this one second you think you're all extreme doing this whole baja thing and then a guy rides by on a bicycle that left sacramento <laughs> so it really uh points at who you are and um we love that we're not on a bicycle we people are amazing. We though. wouldn't do that, but we love the amazing people we yeah. meet every day, and the locals amazing. too. Uh, we really try to connect with all the locals along the way because they enrich in our whole experience by telling us that one little spot that none of the other gringos have been to, you know, and uh, we, f we feel we're very lucky to to have this whole experience and we're going to keep on going. We're in Baja now, but we're going to Texas next and then uh, all the peaks in Colorado. So we have a, a quite a large agenda. We're also sailors, so we have boats all over the place. We've got a big boat in North Carolina we'll have in the uh, Bahamas next year. So we got to get over there and work on that a little bit uh, so that it's ready to go. But we find that breaking it up like that is good as well. And when we do get tired of being in a box like this, we'll go to a resort. We'll give ourselves three days of massages and pools and cocktails by the bar. And um, this is a lot of this is about loving us and what we're doing and getting more connected as people every day. And uh, I'll be the first one to tell you that is tough. Everything else mechanical I got, I fix it. It breaks, I fix it. He's brilliant that way. Absolutely. This man is a genius in every way. But, but my hunting right here is teaching me how to fix myself. And um, that's very important in everybody's world. And uh, together we're going to get through all that stuff and, and be stronger in the end. You know, because we, we just want to go experience people and places that uh, very few people get to do. And we worked long and hard to get here. She, she, uh, 
she sold her business and I retired from a roads department in, in Nevada and uh, we're, we're very comfortable with what we do and where we're going. So, and this rig has been a huge part of it. Not only building it from the ground up, we put every bit of love in every section, you know. When we picked out the, the uh, upholstery, we were both there feeling everything, you know, for days. And then, <laughs> and then we got it done. And then our bed, you know, we, we searched forever for our bed and we got it and it was perfect. So all these things add up to just a, just a great, a great life. There's a good energy and vibe in here for those reasons. You know, there was so much excitement when we were building this and we were working long days at our jobs and I was running the landscaping business and and then in weekends and for months on end but it's the whole time I mean there's so much of the footage where we're dancing and we're laughing and you know me trying to finish these tables because I these surfaces because I had to do it so many times and then 17 cabinet doors was really the only pain in the butt in the whole building because you know he's moving on to the next fun project I'm like I want mine to be fun and he's like just hang in there baby you got this and I'm like how many more times do I have to do this project before I get to do the new? But it was it was a blast. We had so much fun. There's so much good energy in it. We learned so much about building, and you just feel really good about yourself when you you know you're like, that's right, we did that. We did all of this, <laughs> right? And it looks amazing. I, I feel like uh, the effort you put into it really shows, and you know, Curtis, your mechanical ability and imagination really show both your imagination imaginations really show and this was something you conceived and here we are standing in it in a 3d fashion <laughs> right. and it's amazing uh, Arlene you mentioned something about having content backed up uh, tell me a little bit about what's going on there is there going to be uh, something coming up uh, where people can follow you do you have a YouTube channel what's going on with all that well, um, yes, we do have a YouTube channel, and um, I think I started it like three months ago, and I've only got like seven, maybe eight videos up there, because we've been in Mexico for seven weeks, <laughs> and the service is really bad, and we've had a really good time down here, so I haven't spent a whole lot of time making videos, and then when I do, I get frustrated, so I guess the plan is I'm going to take some time when we get to the States and just sit down and just make these videos so that I can just get them up once I have good service and just try to get you know our audience like completely caught up today the videos coming in from Mexico are just amazing beautiful amazing. just we swam with whale sharks yeah there's gonna be a way that we can follow along like we were with you during the trip absolutely it'll, that, it'll that's kind of the way order. you filmed it it's gonna yeah it's gonna go in the order that it happened and on the order on the way out that and that's very important to me. That's why the videos are, although they are been taken months before they get uploaded, they're in the order that we've done things. And so that's really important to me, you know, historically for it to be like, this is where we went and what we did. And so, yeah, they'll be in the order as we went through, you know, Mexico. And I do think you're being a little bit rough on yourself when you say that uh, even though the, it seems like the videos will be from the past, because still, the videos are from this year and if you're on the yeah. road it's what the roads look like this year yeah. after the hurricane that came through That's and true. whatever your experience is this is what they charged at this camp spot this year this was what it was like this because things do change maybe every two or three years or so yeah. it could be different yeah and so i do believe it is current how would somebody find your youtube channel um it's it's barefoot expedition barefoot as in a foot without a sock <laughs> not the animal no shoes yeah, okay no shoes barefoot no like shoes. we don't leave a carbon footprint we want to be as clean as possible and not so barefoot expedition not plural there's another company on there barefoot expeditions that you know take people to do things and so that's the distinction between us is barefoot expedition okay yeah yeah and you'll see a picture of the rig that's the thumbnail for the channel, so you'll, okay. you'll know that it's us. So, yeah. yeah. What would you say to folks if, if we were to go ahead and wrap this up and you had any last thoughts? People are sitting at home, maybe on a, on a laptop, maybe they're at a cafe look, looking at this video on their phones and they've taken the plunge or they haven't quite taken the plunge or they just want to know what life is like for you. What would you like to say to them? <laughs> just do it 
You got to do it. <clears throat> Get yourself out there and whatever you got. Experience it. Go home, regroup, and make it what you want. And go and do it. If you people sit and dream all day long, you're sitting there at your desk. You hate what you're doing. You got to go do it. Take a taste. Figure out what it is that, that makes you alive, and plan it and do it. And this thing wasn't completely done when we left. It's still not. But we we needed to go do it, so we did. And um, that is the that's the biggest part. You guys just break that seal, man, and get out and do it. And you don't need a whole lot to do that. Just get out and figure out what you need. And I'd say once you start. Like give it, give it time. Like don't, <laughs> don't fail the second you get uncomfortable. Like I want to go back because everything good in life is outside the comfort zone. So it's going to be uncomfortable at first because it's really unfamiliar and you're trying to learn to navigate something new. It's like when you go on some trip for a long time and you spend all this time homesick and then you get home and you're like, why did I just ruin my vacation by not enjoying the last few days? So it's kind of that same thing you're just uncomfortable for a minute just kind of ride it out and see if you like it on the other side and then make a decision just give everything time right. just give it a little bit of time it's great advice yeah again it's barefoot expedition barefoot. singular not plural yep. we'll uh, check out the youtube channel i'll put a link in the notes down below where you guys can just click over to that Thank you That's for your awesome. hospitality last night oh, we with uh, Jessica and I. We oh, had oh so much God, fun man. with you. So yeah. much fun. We, we, we really feel fortunate to have met you, and especially <laughs> since he's found you so long ago. And just, yeah. I've, I've learned so many things from you just in the short conversations we've had that's going to help me as a person who's creating videos and uploading and stuff too. So it's yeah. Well, thanks. The, awesome. the, the treat's really been mine. And thank you for taking time. I know you really wanted to get on the road. You've probably already been out, down the road, but I kind of ran out of my rig and chased you down and said, wait a minute, either. just give me a minute. So thanks for doing that. I really appreciate it. And I'm thankful that I can bring this to other folks that like like meeting people like you. So I think everybody wins on this one. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll uh, wrap it up. Happy trails to you. Mm -hmm.